Kia ora everyone, welcome to today's Tech Week. I'm Olivia Garaldo from Creative Northland here at Northland FNC to support creatives. And here I've got with me is Aru Singh from Plunge Comics from Whangarei. Welcome. Hello, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. All right, so hi everybody, uh, my name is Aru, as Olivia said, uh, I run Plunge Enterprises New Zealand Limited. Uh, we are a uh, multi faceted enterprise uh, which is, is basically shaped after an American company called Image Comics, where we do, we have four different things that we do almost, uh, which is run a comic studio, uh, run a convention, um, and create comics. So, uh, oh, and a magazine. So we do a uh, magazine called, we release it digitally, we're going to do it in print, but last year, we got to do it through Kickstarter, but of course last year happened and had to pull it off um, Indiegogo and say, yeah, we'll make, maybe try this again some other time. So Sunspot Magazine is one of our, like it introduced New Zealand creators, New Zealand uh, creatives as well. So we had like, you know, photo photographers, you know, uh, Charm who does uh, cosplay photography. Uh, we had her doing her photos in there and then we had Shane's, um, Shane Evans, seventh, who's our artist on um, Incredible on the covers there. And him showing off his paintings that he does. And so, um, yeah, so his unique style of artwork, he does, you know, um, horror is some of, some of the things he does. Makes fun, um, it's got a real unique um, style. Yeah, kind of like almost cartoony, but not cartoony. And but he's like very well known amongst our circles, and he's, he's a local guy and very active in what he does. And you know, airbrush as well as um, mm -hmm. so, is it digital airbrush or um, no, 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 it's actual, um, straight, tangible, tangible, yeah, yeah, so uh, physical, yeah, I guess, yeah, airbrushing. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so but then he does a lot of his things. Paint, paints his work as well as he does um, digital just art. Like that's been done digitally, he's colored it digitally. Yeah. So he sends me, sends that over and he goes, he, you know, he, he knows that I've got all the logos from Google, so he sends me a blank mm -hmm. and I put the logo on and I have to decide how it's going to work because I got to make it work on his, on a clothing. Yeah, so how yeah. does it move on clothing? So it's really interesting because for myself, um, I don't do hand, Drawing anymore. Mm -hmm. I um I gave up to it, uh, when I had my hand injury. Like I had, I felt you know it's basically just done a rodeo. I fell in slight in the nightclub and sliced my fingers. So for a whole year, I just started uh, craft design mm -hmm. at um you know Polytech my first year in. About March of that year into the first year, there goes my hand. Yeah. Right. So I used to like talking about it. I used to be able to draw this thing. This was this up here. Like I used to do like um. Eddie from Iron Maiden. That's what got me really into um, drawing and, uh, you know, my style. Yeah. And I thought that's, you know, that's pretty, you know, something to bring. And I used to be able to draw him really well all the time. And det detail work, pencil work was really detailed. And now I can't even do that because my hand gets very sore very quickly. So you're forced to kind of use technology. Yeah. So that's where we get into like using something like a Wacom tablet, right? So this is one of the very, very early simple ones. Mm -hmm. uh, I bought that for my nephew uh, because I'm trying to get him into using, because he draws with the hand as well, but I'm not thinking, well, one day you're going to be taking over my company, right? Because I don't have any kids. I don't have any way to take over my legacy after all these things I do. So I'm kind of like, the, you know, the, not the right word to use here because it seems a dirty word right now, but grooming him as an artist and encouraging him since he was like, I guess about seven, you know, it's like, and now he's using, um, I've just given him uh, clips to your paint. Uh, if, you, if, you're, if you guys are um, you know, uh, aware of comic books and uh, most, I would say maybe about close to, very close to 40 to 50% of artists know about that because they use it. Manga, especially manga artists, right? That uh, unless they're doing freehand, a lot of the stuff they do is done all on, you know, clips to your paint because it lets you set set up everything the way you want. And is it a free software? No, 
but it's a very cheap software compared to uh, something like um, Photoshop. Mm -hmm. You can have like, uh, you can buy an entry level clips. It used to be called Manga, Manga Studio Paint, uh, Manga Studio. And over the last few years, it changed to Clip Studio, maybe because manga kind of had, had a, like a, not enough West. And that's what I think of, because it wasn't a Western term to use because it wasn't. But the whole thing is that it's such a great program. Mm -hmm. I've used it for maybe 10 years. Wow. And, and, and I want to be honest, I did use a broken one, like, you know, a, you know, a version. A rip version. Yeah. And, and now I actually pay for it and I actually bought it for my nephew as well. So the thing is, because it's such a quality product and it's like, and here's the thing, like not everybody when you're starting out this way can afford a yeah. couple of hundred bucks. So you're like, oh, you know, well, why are you using a root version? Because you're not able to afford it. And I think now we are able to afford it because more people are using it. And it's like Ford, right? And so, you've got the monthly plans available. Yeah, so that's what I'm on. Yeah. I'm, on a, I'm on a $9 monthly plan. So right, true. so it's like, and I could opt out and then, like, I'm thinking, like, in a year, I'll buy the entire program. Mm. That's going to cost me around about $280 New Zealand, uh, and that's the um expert version. So, there's a pro version, there's expert, but then there's a commercial version. Mm -hmm. So, you can actually like have a classroom full of people for a grand yeah. using a program for whatever to have for themselves. Well, use a monthly one, but I mean, like, so I got into that after struggling for maybe three years, like trying to do this, six issues of this for three years, using, um, so using that, uh, using paint shop, uh, not paint shop, sorry, using uh, Photoshop, right? Point and click with a, with a mouse and turning it, you know, and so it's without a very, Wacom. Yeah, yeah, without a Wacom. And I didn't even know about, I mean, I, I gave away, I, I actually gave away, when I was at film school, a tablet, a drawing tablet from Dick Smith, mm -hmm. because I paid so many bucks for it, and I gave it to a guy to use it to draw, like the starting of Incredible, right? So, yeah. and he did it like about twenty pages or something like that, and then I had somebody else do the other six issues and stuff, mm -hmm. and I'm redoing that whole thing again. So, so what, guess, yeah, what you can actually see is like the big progression, I guess, from pixelization yeah. onto real smooth lines, yeah, uh, so, just due to the advancement of technology and software programs. Well, I mean, and like this isn't like after three years of not actually understanding what I could do. Yeah. Like, I don't know about clips to go paint. I don't know there was a simple little thing there that could make your life so easy, right? You could actually click something and then curve it perfectly around the face. Yeah. You know, and it's already there. You have houses that are already part of it. You have like streets part of it. You have like skies, trees. That's why, why I say like a lot of manga people use it because they don't have to um, have to go looking for, um, you know, trees. I yeah. spend hours drawing trees perfectly because it's already there. I, I use like, I, um, I would like for one of them, I think it was second issue of Incredible, I um, did a car over and over again because mm. I could just move it around. And after drawing the car, so whereas if I'm drawing, I have to do the whole thing over and over again on my you know hand drawing. Yeah, and I guess that allows you then to for the artist to probably focus then more on the story. Yeah. As well, so yeah. I guess the I mean, time frame, the full turnaround time, it actually quickens up with the increase of technology. And that's a that's a great part about that because I mean, like for me, I'm a writer. Mm -hmm. I don't class myself as an artist. Mm -hmm. I, I'm a designer. Yeah. And like I think of myself as a designer and a digital designer at that, not even an artist as a digital artist, yeah. because what I do is I take images of other people's work. Oh no, not other people's work, sorry. Uh, photos of other people that I want to have as been represented in my as the characters in there. Yeah. But superimpose that face onto what my artist has already done. So that it looks all looks uniform. And I struggle with it because I'm not an artist. Mm -hmm. And I haven't done, um, you know, I haven't drawn people for about 20 odd years. Yeah. And so with this technology, with Clips to Paint, it just ex expands everything for me. I'm able to do so much more with it. And like with, with the whole Wacom thing with the tablet, you know, this is, this is the most basic. It's almost like, I think there's another one below that. It's a bamboo. Well, I'm not even sure if that is the bamboo. But in 2010, you know, uh, I went through a separation. So basically, 
I is invest. I took out a loan and decided that I was going to go back to school and finish off my um, degree in filmmaking because something had happened and I'd missed out on 30 credits. So I couldn't graduate. So I, I decided that, okay, I'm not going to just sit around and do nothing. Now I'm just going to go back to school. I went to um, South London at um, SIT down there and did my film degree. And then after, I think 2010, like, so that was from like 2004 to 2006, out of three years there. So after coming back to Auckland, I started doing short films mm -hmm. and then work and I, I had a shift work, so I worked weekends. So you go filmmaking weekends, right? So I couldn't get into filmmaking. So that's when I got into doing the comments. Um, turned the comment. I was like, I need to tell my story. And I need, and I, you know, I don't know why I decided comments was a thing. I because I'd been a filmmaker and I was like, I need to tell my stories, but I'm like, I've been reading comments since I was seven years old. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, I mean, like, I'm I've got like Garfield here. As a kid, I'm reading Garfield. You know, as a teenager, I'm reading Garfield. You know, and as a child, I was reading Judge Dredd and Tintin. Oh, right. So I'm I'm eight years old, being introduced to Judge Dredd and Tintin in New Zealand. Mm. You know, in the library. So the library's got Judge. Oh, sorry, Tintin and Obelix and Asterix. And my next one um, neighbor across the street is into Judge Dredd, and he's about the same age as me. Mm. You know, eight year old kid from Fiji, who's the first whatever. I think I don't even. I think I was reading Goofy or something. Like the shopkeeper had a Goofy or you know Mickey Mouse uh, comic, and that's the first time I ever saw it. When I was like, like seven years old or something. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know what it was. It was just pictures. Mm -hmm. And so when we used to like, I mean Regan Bell, right? He's he's the guy that got me into comics in a hard way. Yeah. And for maybe about five years or something, I didn't. I just read comics because it made me escape. And I struggled because of learning and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. So here's an Indian kid who doesn't know speak English properly. Mm -hmm. And so Regan's house is here. And my mom sends me to the next house to be taught how to read English mm -hmm. and spell and all that. And we have across the street, this is like in Lady Street in Waterloo. Uh, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so this thing for you, there was already like a collaboration that was helping you network your way through the comic industry to where you are today. Yeah, I mean, it's like, you, you um, I guess post you can't, you're... You can't really, I mean, comics can be a very lonely thing. Like mm. manga is very lonely for people and you can see them like, because they, have, they, you know, they spend so much time on their own titles. You don't have five people working on like, say, if you're, if you're like with, um, say with, uh, you know, you're working on Punisher or Wolverine or, or Judge Dredd, I'm sorry, or maybe even Judge Dredd, uh, you know, uh, or Superman, you're, or, you know, Star Wars comics, you have probably two editors, their assistants, you yeah. have a writer, you have a letterer, you have a colorist, uh, and then you have an actual artist who does the pencil. Mm. And then you have the inker who comes in and makes it black. Mm. And then you have a colorist who makes it, you know, colors it all up. And then you have the guy who does um, cover art, and so and so. When you know, when you suddenly decide you want to do comics, you're like, I don't know nobody, yeah. you know. So you start, so I end up doing that. With you know, we've just done the all five, or six issues of that, and this is basically from a, you know the short film, a film I did, a feature film, which is 85 minutes long, as part of my graduation thing for um, for my degree, mm -hmm. and nobody had ever done it big long, like everywhere else I do. Max was 45 minutes, and I said, I can't. I've decided I'm, I'm kind of like a determined person and a jealous person. Mm -hmm. I actually said, I said, I posted that a week or two ago. I said, My jealousy, I turned my jealousy into production, mm -hmm. right? So if I say, if I see this getting, you know, I see toys, I was like, I need to make my character into a toy. Yes, yeah, so you're doing right. it with a critical, aren't you? Yeah, so we, um, we've got a friend um, who's you know designing a Funko Pop type thing of, for me because I'm like, well, let's pull it apart. How do we put this all together? So talking about toys, uh, so this is like, so let's talk about part of our partnership um, that started back in around about 2012, 2011, which I forgot about because my, I had a head injury um, just after that. And I partnered up with a company called Rising Seven Comics because we 
I started my um, comic company as Rising Sun New Zealand. And because my, my name, four names are natural, which means Rising Sun. So I named my company after that. And so what happened was that there's a Rising Sun Comics America. And somehow, I don't remember a lot of it because of my head injury. I've forgotten all that. And so how that all came about. But all I know is something like they said, hey, we're here. We've got the same name. You've got the same name. Would you like to partner with us? Mm. And that's how it happened. And then suddenly I was creating comics with Incredible was getting started. Uh, we were doing a whole bunch of other stuff. And then I hit my head. And all of it went away. And so it took to, oh yeah, just, be, just after that, I decided, well, I've got all these, I've got a huge interest in comic books and I'd like to make a business out of it. Because my, you know, I've, this is like a, I'm 48 now, so I guess 40 year love of comics, maybe about 30 years of collecting them and reading them properly, you know, uh, and learning from them. And the thing is like, you know, learning how to write them. You know, we've got a book here by uh, Brian Michael, Michael Bendis and Powers, uh, if you guys might have seen the TV show, it's called Powers. You know, it, it basically, he basically susses out how he does his um, scripting. Is there an act? Currently, that you know, yeah, so the way he does this, um, the way he writes the script now, because I'm trained as a filmmaker, mm -hmm. I started using um, Celtex or mm -hmm. Celtex, C L T X, and um, I've been using that program for since I was in film school, mm -hmm. so this is goes back to about maybe 2003, mm -hmm. 2004, and I've written like thousands of pages of scripts yeah. since then. Like I've written, digitally? Yeah. Can you think about how much uh, that would be in terms of paper, hey? It was, well, each story for me, I write as a movie, mm -hmm. a 90 minute film. Mm -hmm. And if you feel it, 22 times six is our amount, is that like 180 pages or something like that? Uh, per, per graphic novel. So basically each one is right about this thick. Wow. So, you know, by the time it ends up being produced, it's right about that. Oh, actually, yeah, it's 22 pages. And so it's, you know, and I've got like movies upon movies, and I've got short films, I've got one, one shots. I mean, like, I've, like I was talking about earlier about um, Shane Evans, uh, him, um, I created this guy um, back in when I had a comic shop. Mm -hmm. So that was that came out of like uh, because my uncle was stabbed, right? So I like so how do you like if, if you're a person like me who's like who gets depressed very quickly and stuff emotional? I learned to turn that, and especially with my help of my sister, and to turn that into art. Yeah, you know, put the stories into that to turn your uh, create turn into creativity. That's what I'm going jealousy. Like, so when you look at something, you go, I can do that. But when when you feel emotion, deeply emotional about stuff, and I thought, well, you know what? How would Punisher deal with this? Yeah. Right. So I want your, justice. Yeah. Your you characters. Know? So you know, yeah. um, that's him here. So like, you know, one of my, um, you know, is is but um, you know, at the moment he's not in every sort thing. But like for years, I've loved him because um, I think there's a thing in like. As a child, you want justice, right? Because you know what's fair, what's moral and stuff as you're growing up, if you've been instilled into your life on that. And like, I think uh, my grand, grandfather used to do that um, with us, you know, teach, say, say what's right and what's wrong. And so, and so when my uncle was there, I was like, how would this character do? So I write a short story, like, mm -hmm. five, and when, like, so in 2014, um, I opened a comic shop up. And for about, I think we did 18 months. Yeah, uh, we did about 18 months and, you know, we tried really hard to make it work. But part of the shop was that we started doing a, I think a second bi-weekly or weekly teaching how to do comics. Mm -hmm. So Shane and I, that's how Shane and I got together. Because uh, we, I mean, we met, maybe met when we were at um, Polytech, like back in 94. Maybe 93 or 94, just like because he wasn't visual arts, 
and I was in craft design, doing sculpture, glass blowing, you know, and um, jewelry. And I should have actually gotten into freaking visual, visualized, right? Because I would have been, but I love making things, you know, that's why I like this whole idea of tactiles. And uh, I like people being able to run their hands across my paintings, you know, being able to feel it. And so I, that's why I get into ceramic art, because I want people to touch it. And my teacher, uh, Chris, um, Keith Mahi, who was, you know, who's my, um, who passed away a while back, he was a very famous New Zealand glass blower. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and they're the ones who set up um, burning issues here, mm -hmm. right? The four of them, um, I think it was Sarah, uh, Sandra Story, Chris Carey, and I think it's Sue. Uh, I think it's Sue. I can't remember. Um, but she was a she's kid, kid, she was um, you know like kid, uh, kid's partner, and mm -hmm. she's still around. You know, I still haven't met her yet. I've been meaning to. So he's all, he you know he was like you know Aru likes to touch, make sure it's you know he can tactile, tactile things. Mm -hmm. He's like he's look at his glass work. He's always he doesn't like smooth stuff. You know, I'm like yeah, because why should we just have things there? And go, no, no, you can't, you know, no, the painting is so Spanish, so you can't touch it. Like this, the first thing kids want to do is touch things, right? Mm -hmm. So if I'm creating art, you know, like jewelry and stuff like that, or ceramics, I want to be able to run the hands over. Mm -hmm. But comics can't do that. But comics give you this an instant smell, like this. There was this, there's this, th yeah, there's this tactile ness about it. And that's the thing, like, so, okay, you can't go over it. But the, there's, it's solid. It's in your hand. That's why I think digital. As much as I do digital art, and I don't, you know, it, I don't want it to be still digital. I mm -hmm. want it to be able to come onto the paper so people can touch it, read it, put it away, and then go back to it whenever they want. Just like art, right? Mm -hmm. So it is art. It is uh, literature. And I think whatever people think, um, as if it's like, oh, it's children's thing. It's, it might have been sometime. And that's the reason that's been that way is because of the fact that way back in the 1950s, they got rid of every other type of comic books in America. Mm -hmm. So all you had for a long time was just superheroes, yeah. right? A man in tights, woman in tights, and so on. And so it got rid of, uh, made it very slim, the whole thing, you know, comics became very slim, but now, mm -hmm. right? Now you've got, um, you've got, let me see. Here we go. So the, you've got stuff like, you know, very, very things. This is a um, fun time comics from, uh, from Christchurch, mm -hmm. right? So the guys down there, they have a group, uh, a co-op, and um, you know, and he was talking about jealousy here. It's like when I when I got into comics, I was like, one day I want to be in this magazine, right? And this is like a while back, maybe about two thousand nine or something, and I really wanted. You know, be a part of New Zealand heritage. I wanted to be so hey, you know, not jealousy, but it's just the whole thing is like, why can't I? You want to be part of it. Yeah. And I mean, and, yeah, and your access to technology has allowed you to really do that. And I well, think trial and error, hey, because I mean, recently you've just in a lot they're doing publishing yeah. with Calder's print. Yeah. Um, so that's a whole so, different I mean, side of things as well. That's a huge thing because I'm, I never actually got into print. Before this is my first time getting to print. I mean, the, our guys up over in uh, Rising Comics in America, they printed this out here. So they're, you know, they, so having being a small company like us, like any, any company like us, right, we can't compete with these guys. Mm -hmm. We really can't compete with all these guys because they have billions of dollars behind them, like millions of dollars behind them. And if the comic fails, they don't care uh, because it's there, they can make another movie, make, make their money back. But when we're, you know, when you're a little company like us, you got to make sure that it's your quality, the card, because that their one's like it's very thin, the ink comes off, the paper's got to be like very, you know, we can't beat them at, you know, production. Yeah. I mean, sorry, we can't beat them at uh, popularity, but we can try to compete with them. I should say, not beat them, compete with them um, for the customer's attention to detail, to detail yeah. and to, to quality of paint and paper. That's why, like, for me, we're doing a, you know, with Vertigo, right? That's the first, we're going to Kickstarter, to rise in some comics thing. And we basically said, 
we're going to do only for this for this special Kickstarter thing, only going to print in New Zealand mm -hmm. and only in Whangarei mm -hmm. because we want to say this is our home base, this is where this character is based. The superhero is from New Zealand, but she's also from Whangarei. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to make sure that we had some sort of, you know, to say that printed in New Zealand. I mean, the American side of things, they're running a whole bunch of comics that are, they're running just that. And are they doing, how far are they taking the comics in terms of their digital space, whether it be on YouTube or? Well, I mean, for, for the digital, I'm like, we do web comics. Or e-publication. Yeah. So for us, we like like was mentioning earlier, we did the Sunspot, mm -hmm. became digital download comics. So you can pay like $2.99 uh, on, on our site, on Rise and Comics site, and you can basically pay and download it. 64 page, full color, with interviews of New Zealand people in there and people around the world, mm -hmm. and comic books, 40 pages of comic books for $2.99, right? Mm -hmm. So, and not only just, that you got like um pretty much like a fun time comics of all different art stories so i said I, I said well we want a complete story when you do these things we don't want like a you know we got to buy the next maybe you get the story so so with fun time um you know with pandemic last year right yeah. so um the, um the guys his name's just lost me um but i interviewed him because like last year when pandemic hit, I was told by the US that hey, this is going to take four weeks, right? Buckle in, it's going to take four weeks. Uh, so you're going to be shut in. And I was like, man, that's a long time for us to be on their own inside their home. So my mm -hmm. whole thing was like, what if, and that's, that was my whole focus within that. It's like, what if every day I go up and say hello to everybody and say, hey, I don't want you guys getting depressed. You know, let's talk. And so I started interviewing people and um, he was part of it. I interviewed him. I interviewed a whole bunch of Kiwi artists mm. and creatives and people from overseas during pandemic, right? So everybody's at home. <laughs> so I rang up, I, you know, I got the guys from, uh, you know, Amadella Justice from Rising Comics and also I got the guys from Henry and there's another way from here somewhere. There is, you know, uh, Black Lives Empire and collapse, I got them to get, come in and go, hey, let's let's talk and talk mm -hmm. about your comic, let's talk about what got you into comic. And that's probably quite different for them to even be engaging in terms of an interview kind of space, hey, yeah. and talking about their work in that way. So that's and really I mean, like, I'm used to interviewing because I did radio work, yeah. like two and a half years of radio work. And so, and I'm chatty, so I think, trying, so engaging them to talk about what they create, Mm -hmm. and why they create and why they write what they write is was a really cool thing because then we could then we put the video up on facebook then we put it on youtube and it was like people who didn't even know who these artists were suddenly were seeing who they were and they would you know could see oh this is what this book's about so for us on rising comics like we're talking about technology you could basically buy the comic from the website mm -hmm. and it will get delivered to you around the world and um and so, so accessibility just yeah. expands hey yeah so i mean and the other thing is like so i'm working with like an artist from uh a greek artist who's living in estonia right now mm. right uh, we're doing a series called um a, um anthrop of christ animals kiwi animals like i mean not really curious but they're living in new zealand there's a called pj and shivi the modern bed right mm. So we got an Australian black sheep, uh, we got a rabbit, uh, mum, and we've got, you know, and then for the sheep, he's a, he's a polar bear, mm -hmm. and the mum's a grizzly, and that's so now the, uh, now the daughter's a brown bear, right? Uh, like a light brown bear, uh, mixed race, I guess, of our species. So basically, how does this, so she's like around about 18 years old, just coming out of college, and she's trying to get a job, right? So how does she deal with like the pressures of modern life, this modern life and social media and all that? And how do these animals, you know, uh, deal with modern life in, in the society? And so we, I called, uh, I think it was Twitter instead of Twitter. Like, uh, you know, uh, I think it's like animals, what is it like uh, birds or, you know, C H I T T E R is that Twitter? Right? Mm -hmm. So and stuff like that, and like iCarrot instead of Apple I, or iPhone, it's, it's sort of like 
you know, and then he designed, like I said, this is what I want, right? And I, like the Shibi and PJ, PJ kind of go way back from the fitness and EBS. My sister, I made a little orange teddy bear for my sister for a band called the Shibis. And she was a scar band as part of the church. And PJ was a, an angel halo teddy bear. We'll take PJ on. So I brought these things from the past into last year and said, hey, I really want to do this cartoon thing. Like, so I want to do a strip. So basically, you know, this sort of like three, three panel strips like Garfield and stuff. And just tell a story in three steps because I'm used to telling 130 page, yeah. you know, 90 page story, and then try to tell it into three steps. So it's challenging. And I think technology has really helped me do that. I can get it. I, I mean, like, we're working on another thing called Templeton Torn, which is an entire, you know, supernatural horror story, um, series, which is like has got about something like that, 300 pages. And he's working on the first 40. And you know, I get up uh, on Messenger and start talking to her for an hour. Mm -hmm. Hey, so this is what I want to see. So I, you know, I can put my, turn my phone around to the screen on my TV and go, this is the picture that I want to. How does that happen without this technology that we have, right? So imagine a guy from Estonia working from a guy from New Zealand, creating some, yeah. two different series, like once a horror thing and once teddy bears, right? And animals and, um, and protests and all this. And, but it wouldn't happen without having like uh, Facebook Messenger, Skype. Uh, wouldn't happen without the fact that Ryan's son already was working with him because he's doing his own thing as well. Uh, you know, he's got his own comic books that he's doing, but he then, Works on my stuff, and and you know, and you know we you know we go serious as good as possible because I'm I'm saying I would like to see one day PJ and Shibi become an anima animation, mm -hmm. right? So something like uh, Family Guy or something, uh, but with animals and and then toys, mm -hmm. right? I'm saying I want these to this is so I'm not thinking like hey this is just a comic strip. I'm thinking how do I get from this to t you know from from this to this. To TV show and make a whole ecosystem of your own. Yeah, and yeah. not only just and not only just me. So when I was setting up Plunge Enterprises, right, there was all these different things: Plunge Games, Plunge Animation, uh, Plunge Studios, Plunge Convention. Um, did I mention gaming? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So Plunge Gaming. So like you could have like play incredible as a game, as a light mm -hmm. novel, and so you get engaged with people and. Then you got lunch merchandise and so you got toys and stuff. So who did you use for like the merchandising? Um in terms of like the toy production, was that well, difficult? Well for uh, for um the guy who's um, works on this one, this is like an American, this is a um, sorry, this is a US bombardier from uh Action Force. So there was a way, way back in the 80s, and this is something that Rising Sun does as part of their uh, like a British side, because like Rising Sun Comics, we're Oceania, right? So I represent Oceania, I'm the director of Oceania. Um, and so there's four there's four directors altogether. So there's a US and then there, there is a um, UK. And then there's also a free um, non-profit organization as well. By the way. So, um, so these guys, the, um, the UK deals with like old uh, publications, like, like the Action Force stuff, which is like uh, space, you know, bomb it. You know, I, um, I mean, I, I, I know, I just can't remember my brain, I just can't think, but like back in the 80s, they used to have all these uh, sci fi space, like the size of, um, you know, basically uh, they produced them about gay big, like, yeah. you know, the big, big uh, paper newsprint comics, mm -hmm. you know, like the Judge Rachel's come out of like, and then they used to like um, for girls as well. And then, so thanks. Whereas this is the thing, like people think of comics as just for guys, but like way back then, there's always this equal thing of, um, you know, females working on their own comics and mm -hmm. comics for females, comics for young boys, young girls. And, you know, and now we're going back to making, you know, and that's where manga becomes so cool is because, uh, and why the US market is at the moment suffering because manga doesn't say, Let's talk about politics and our comics, right? And this is the same thing with me. I'm like, um, if I want to talk about politics, it goes somewhere else. 
and some other script, you know, so I'll go, this goes here. When it comes to like saying critical, I'll go, well, let's talk about why incredible girl was where she is. Like she's actually Romanian, right? So uh, I'm, you know, I'm, and the story is inspired by the Romanian uh, uh, Ceausescu uh, and uh, the communist regime that was there. And because of the way they were treating the, um, the orphan babies, right? And the stories that you uh, like the name of the character is inspired by my brother, my niece, and then my brother in law who shortened it. So, I suppose she like, I because like back in 2007, I was like, I, it would be cool to do a superhero comic, but for girls. I mean, not for girls, but like, that was female, right? And like, so the, my go to wasn't, hey, let's do a, super, a guy superhero, but, uh, like a male superhero. Uh, my first thing was, female and it's like my niece had just been born I hadn't spent much time because I was away from school and so she was about four years old she had just seen the Incredibles and so she goes I said to her like hey uh, if you had a superhero uh, that for yourself what would you call it and she's like incredible girl yeah. that was her that's basically in my and my uh, and because it can go like that nah. and she's my brother-in-law goes hey you know yeah, that name might cause you trouble. So why don't we show it? What about incredibly honest? Yep, yeah, that works. So that's what incredible pain feel painful. And so here we are, 2007, now having the first print of the first issue. Mm -hmm. I worked on the first, second. I mean, I'm not the only one who worked on it. So there was like, uh, like I said before, when we were doing like Thomas Awakens thing with the tablet, uh, we had uh, Mike, Mike Payne. It was it was in the a year later than I'm uh, like I was in third uh, like I was in a year ahead of him film school and so he did like 20 15 pages because he was doing the manga so the incredible was actually a manga mm -hmm. character so mm -hmm. this what this is the way thing was like this way back in like 2006 I had actually the comics that was actually manga so it actually looks manga rich because of because when um, when I had Mike Burbeck from England come in and work with me on it via Facebook, uh, or might, no, sorry, might have been you deviant art. So I was actually without Patreon, there's no, so pay, let's, you know, talk about like, um, um, you know, doing online stuff. Mm -hmm. Patreon, you can make money by Patreon, by, you know, creating your own work and selling it either in physical or in digital. Mm -hmm. We've got people locally who do that. Uh, I, I myself, um, I'm working uh, on a game. Mm -hmm. uh, script writing a game editing co-writing and script editing a is that for print or digital or online online game like so basically you can download it for their own computer it's like it's a light novel so light novel oh sorry not a light novel a visual novel yeah right so it's a print uh, point and click uh text based either 3d animated uh pencil drawn or some people use photos yeah of actual people yeah. you know but it's because they want to tell a story. If they don't have into technology, if they don't know how to use Rampy, or if they don't know how to use, uh, oh gosh. Is it the program you're creating it with? Yeah, we're using Rampy, uh, but there's other one, uh, Unity, yeah. right? And so Engine Room, right, down here, uh, where we're gonna have a bunch, they teach that, right? Um, so um, Lenny and the guys down there, um, and this is what I like, like I found about, I think maybe about what they were doing after I got involved with gaming. Mm -hmm. And this is what I'm saying, like when we, um, I don't see comics as just a paper medium or a um, digital medium. I see it as a business enterprise, but not only stopping there, but I don't know how to design the toys. Yeah. I don't know how to do, um, do 3D animation. I don't know all these other things, but I know there are people out there locally who do. And then I'm like, how do I bring them to work? They say, how do we come on this project and work this? And the thing is, the problem with like our mentality for a long time has been giving money first and then I'll do the work. Whereas now people need to understand that you've got to do the product, right? That's why, that's the way like, uh, um, you know, uh, gaming works online. So, mm -hmm. like, especially if you're doing it through Patreon or subscribe stuff, stuff like that, where people, you know, pay you monthly. Like, 
I, I, I get uh, stipends because I'm actually, I volunteer to work on this really, I think 12, ch uh, 10 chapter, 12 chapter, too many chapters or something like that, they do specials. So like Easter releases or Christmas releases, short stories, but then they do like a huge, like at the moment he's done about 640 renders of CGI, like 3D CGI, actual realistic looking people. Yeah. You know, and his delivery this month will be a bit late because, mm -hmm. you know. And people appreciate that. He has a that transparency through technology yeah, to say, hey, okay, this is what's going on. This is where I'm at. Exactly. Yeah. That's where Discord comes in. So he's mm -hmm. on Discord going, I see the message, going, yeah, uh, you know, I'm behind. That means that my editor's going to be behind because he's got to edit, and then my proofreader's going to be behind. Yeah. And so by the time we get it down, it might be a couple of weeks, if not a quick, but I work really fast. I'll just go, do I need to do anything else? Nope. Let's go. So I'll spend like two, three hours until my brain freezes. So because yeah. of my head injuries, I can, I can concentrate for about maybe max two hours yeah. and then the drowsiness hits mm -hmm. and the tiredness hits and I'll just go to sleep. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of your proofreading, yeah. if you were to send it out to a proofreader, what is the best application or app that you use for that? Or how do they, how do proofreaders like to right. receive your work? So the, he, will, he will send me uh, the script with the points, yeah. uh, beats, as they say. Like, so okay. this is going to happen here, this is going to happen here, this is going to happen, the, you know, they're going to be in this room, what's going to happen here. Uh, this guy's going to come up. This is what I want to outline. To, you know, basically an outline of what's happening in there. Is it on my Word doc? What are we talking? We're talking about. Uh, oh gosh. Come on, it's a it's a script editor. Okay. Yeah. So basically, it's like code. It's like editing for code. So uh, it'll be like. Oh gosh, it's 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 basically computer code. Mm -hmm. So it's you know. They get basically says what's going to happen, and I'll write in the text. I'll watch what's happening, and on one screen, and then I'll have the editor um, the code with the script, the whole story there. And as I see mistakes, I'll edit, yeah, and change. And if um, so, if, if um, there's some sort of animation, so this this guy's one, like not everybody says animation, mm -hmm. so he animates um, sequences, little scenes. And so I have to go in and go, okay, so during this time, I need to put in text that makes it exciting. Mm -hmm. There's no, like, you know, um, this, so the week, like, so not everybody who's a very artistic person knows how to write a story properly or has spent three years in school learning how to write a script. Or prior to that, I spent like about six years of doing stage work. Mm. and writing my own short stories or short films or skits or, um, or production and then went to film school for three years. So, you know, the technology allow, allows me right, to be able to talk to them via Discord, not knowing who he is. Uh, you know, I use a box now, mm. right? Because it's a different thing to what I want doing here. And it's just what I chose. It's like basically calling myself malfunction mm -hmm. from my DJ name. So I went from having this release as malfunction to incredible now released as our initial base things incredible. So you know because every everybody's used pseudonyms forever. I mean like um, Richard Bachman, right? Stephen King, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and so and I think Richard Bachman wrote the running man with Arnie, mm. right? And so, but he he wrote those stories because of sci-fi, it wasn't horror, so he wrote it under a pseudonym. And so this is, so for me, I mean, like I write all genres. Uh, and so I've got superhero, I've got a crime drama, uh, noir, uh, about four guys who play a game, right? And they get caught in, in a crime and basically spend time like like me and you are doing here with the cops talking yeah, in yeah, several yeah. rooms but yeah. flashback story and so but then i also like you know i've got a tune mm -hmm. uh which is very political 
in a sense, but not but funny political, you yeah. know, they take a jazz at job. But then I'm working on horror uh, fantasy, like yeah. angels and demons. And then now I'm gonna be working, I'm working on a, a vampire and a little um, werewolf story mm. about a mum and son. So it's like this whole concept of mother-son relationship. So it's totally um, allowing myself to not be boxed into, hey, I'm just gonna do comic books about yeah. Superheroes, because that's just gets boring yeah. very I, quickly. I guess that kind of brings you to I guess closing off with a few questions mm -hmm. in terms of where do you think the comic industry is ending up or, or leading towards? I mean, you've seen so many changes already with technology, and I think yep. yeah, it's great to hear that it's still going to have that tactile, physical thing. I think that people still like those that you know love records; they still like that physical, exactly. tangible but product. I mean, it's, I mean, they, they, they said that when digital came, comics would no longer be printed. Yeah. But the thing is that we are physical, tactile, it's emotional beings, mm -hmm. right? So like I was saying, like, I can open up a comic and smell that print. Yeah. And you know, you know, it's that, that, uh, that uh, connection that comes with it. You got that. When I was a kid, I yeah. had my first comic book, right? And so I could um, enjoy that. And uh, I think, Technology isn't going to take that away. Yeah. It, it cannot, because as long as we're human with emotions, we will still want to feel in touch, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so it's part of who we are. It's, it's human nature, and you can't take that away from the thing. That's why we have, like, we look at, you know, kids play with... And the merchandising and the emotional yeah. connection. To be like, I just read about Superman, and I want to have the toy now, yeah. and how and, accessible those things well, now I mean, are, hey? Right? Okay? I mean, talk about that. So, like, you had the Netflix um, Jessica Jones. Yeah. All right. Uh, I like the first season. I love the second season. I hated the third season. And, but I like the character. I read the comic books. I thought it was really cool. And she was created by Bandits, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, so Bandits was just like me, writing his own comic books. Mm -hmm. And then he got hired by Marvel Comics, mm -hmm. right? So he went and did a couple um, things there. Now he's working with um, on superhero um, comics with um, in DC. Now last year hit the you know comics really hard, but last year was really good for manga. Mm -hmm. And um, and so because of that, the, instead of people go, I'm gonna think that the a lot of the pros going, hey, manga is doing well. Why is it doing so well? And you know, arts and well, they basically started attacking manga, mm. which is basically another form of comics, mm. right? And so, the idea of this whole concept of like one art, one style is better than the other, I don't understand that because I mean, we've had four different types of arts before. So like, I mean, you look at if you look at um, the history of his own comics alone by um, Adrian Cano, right? You've got so many different styles. So, yeah. you know, this, this is just New Zealand. It's an awesome book. So, yeah, he, he did a lot of tough work on that. And so, you know, one of our well known guys from New Zealand. So, I, I mean, I've got some books here. So, he got Don mm -hmm. Hurox. He got to work on, um, I think he won, won an Eisner for one of his works. Uh, and so, you know, we had Bro Town, right? So, yeah, I mean, that's the other thing. So maybe it's Bro Town that got into my head to do like the mm -hmm. whole idea of doing um, Chibi and PJ mm -hmm. about a, you know, a bunch of uh, animals with human traits, whatever, but still animals in New Zealand um, because it's cartoons. What? And I love cartoons. So, mm -hmm. like, I watch manga profusely because I think they just tell stories mm -hmm. and good stories. At the end of the day, if my stories are crap, nobody's going to want it all yeah. right so i have to enjoy my own stories or else why would i expect anybody else to so mm -hmm. at the end of the day like movies that fail right blockbuster movies that fail they fail because the story doesn't connect with people yeah. and i want to you know um, you, as a writer you want to connect with your art mm -hmm. right and so like i was saying i'm not an artist i'm not a comic artist because I don't do pencil work. I can't actually do a figure properly. I get some other people to do it properly, and then I tweak it around to where I want it. So I think 
there is always going to be the se sequential art. Uh, sorry, it is sequential art. Yeah, comics basically, you know, that's the words we use for it. But manga, um, there's manhwa uh, from Korea. Yeah. There's manhua, H U, sorry, M A N H U A from China. And I'm not sure about other countries. I mean, they've, they've been Indian comic books for a while from mm -hmm. India. Uh, yes. And they do, I mean, I don't think they had superhero mostly, but they had real people type thing. There yeah. was more religious stories. Um, but superheroes is basically, is an uh, iconic American thing. Yeah. You know, whereas if you look at Europe, they do everything else. Most, I mean, they do superheroes as well, but they do everything else. You know, you've got Tintin and Obelisk came out of there with the most two famous you know, European exports. Mm. And I was reading um, that in Mordor, mm. you know. So I guess next for you for Plunge, where can people mm. come and connect with you and all you have to offer? Do you want to tell us about that? Right, so... Um, and then we'll close up with some questions. If anyone's got any questions from out there, please feel free to type them in the Q&A and I will read them out soon. I'd almost forgotten people were there. So, because we were talking so much. <laughs> um, sorry, guys, I was just, yeah, hopefully... Uh, so I didn't bore you. Comic gig. Yeah, Tell so, us about that. All right, so we've got Incredible is going to be on uh, in June on Kickstarter, mm -hmm. right? So we got posters. Uh, Olivia is doing a cover. Uh, we've got custom covers, one off covers. Uh, we got five from, I think, Northland Bay. Yeah, five yes. from Northland. Uh, five, Shane's going to do five exclusive, um, different uh, only covers. And these, like, um, because of talking about technology, right? So Kickstarter crowdfunding your efforts, mm -hmm. people believing in what you're doing, and, you know, and just like uh, Patreon, uh, you know, and I guess Twitch and YouTube with, um, you know, uh, doing videos and stuff. But with, you're able to do like, you know, um, come up with a game yeah. and a card game and put it on, uh, you know, on Kickstarter or Indiegogo and have people back it and you deliver it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, my whole thing is see, you know, will people get into the, this comic? I've yeah. kept it very low cost because I said like it's 1200 US, yeah. right? So uh, that covers our costs and covers our artists for us. Um, make sure that our artists who do the custom work gets paid because as a creator myself, I want to be paid. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure that people who are working with me get paid as well. So. And the, you know, this is the thing about what I don't understand with corporations. Well, yeah. Why aren't they paying people that do the work and use the work? So you got, you know, I mean, there's so many history, so much history about what the, the bad history with comics yeah. and creators. And so, do you want to talk us about plans and be that way? Right. Cool. Okay. Plans. So uh, in 2018, I um, Hindu from uh, from Craig Norton asked me about what I did, and then she just suggested, had I ever thought about doing a convention. So we decided in 2019 first to do a convention. And so Plunge Comics, uh, Plunge, Plunge with, uh, uh, what is that, is that, that thing, right? So whatever that is, at the end, uh, Capital Plunge, basically um, comics, anime, and pop culture convention. Mm -hmm. It's basically our youth being able to actually access, I think. access um, the pop culture environment they're into, mm -hmm. uh, come, you know, be able to dress up for that one day and nobody's going to do anything about it, like Halloween. Uh, and what dates us? This is the 10th of July. 10th of July, everyone. So so come along to 116. Yeah, 10th of July, July. Uh, from 11 o'clock to 4 o'clock, just a five-hour slot. But this year, we're going to try something different. We were looking to like engage into uh, uh, digital digital art, game design. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got Enteron coming. We have actually, uh, so we've actually uh, set aside a special room this year for kids to be able to create comics. Mm -hmm. uh, we're hoping that the council will fund that. Uh, the Fungor Council will fund that through the art scheme, through uh, arts and community scheme for the kids to draw their own comic, one or two page comic, black and white, and then we'll put it all together 
and uh, make a comic that they can have. And you know, like a five size. Yeah, so libraries going does badge creations and stuff like that. You can make your own badge, cut up old common hex library books, make up your own badges, and also they do zines. Mm -hmm. You know, and then they have a three D printer. You can, and this is the thing that technology wise, we have not going to do like three D printing, right? Uh, I saw um, someone on Instagram, a cosplay on Instagram, make her own uh, Far Far Cry or some game, uh, laser cutting a pieces like uh, layers, and with you know a foam. And then she would she would glue them all together, and it was like a kit set. Mm. But I'm watching this machine just cut up this design out of it. And so you know, with uh, STL, I think it was last year. Sorry, I think it was 2018. The library um, Glenn there was a great guy. I know that you know um, they printed out an entire uh, Pokemon chess set for us. Wow. With them, uh, with their, you know, yeah, and so, and then they, what, what they had a couple left there, uh, and they put it up there to show the kids that look at this, and like, you know, think of the prices of a three D printer keeps going down, and I'm like, it would be nice to have one for us if we design out a toy, so we could like little toys get put on Kickstarter, mm -hmm. you know, and whenever we release a comic book, we put like a chair that you get like five bucks to get a toy with it mm -hmm. of the character. And then you could paint it yourself at home. Awesome. And then we could set up a chessboard of our own characters, you know? So it's, you know, I mean, when we look to oyster. Yeah. So you, there was, that, you know, that's where technology is so friggin' awesome right now. You know, um, the money, I mean, to be able to do it, all you need is passion, right? You gotta be willing to do the work. I mean, like I said, my brain shuts down up two hours, and because I'm, on, I'm, you know, I'm on a lot of meds because of my head injuries and stuff, and kayaks, and so I can only function for a little while. But I have people who work with me, right? Like we got Shane, he's popping up. I mean, Jason was there uh, assisting me with the finances side of things, and you know, um, and just making sure we're, you know, connecting. Awesome. And I think. The other thing, like we, have, I haven't mentioned Creative North that much. I haven't mentioned him, but without Creative North, we wouldn't be able to do with plant what we have. And you know, because she she got me kickstarted into it. I had thought about doing it at the success at the comic shop at the success succeeded, but didn't uh, because of the way things were going um, and the challenges I faced. Um, and but I think because we. And the local sport, like we've got like the movie theater, right? We've got so many people in the library. We've got house pizza supported us, warehouse supported us. So like, you know, um, yeah. And because it's, it's the whole idea is like, it's like, that's what Plunge is about. It's about community, mm -hmm. right? So you could go and play your, your Yu-Gi-Oh card game or Flesh and Blood. Check out Flesh and Blood. It's New Zealand created card game, training card game, right? Um, and that blew me away because I was like, yes, you know, another New Zealander, you know, bunch of New Zealanders creating something to take to the world. And I think that's where it is. I mean, we're, we're very number eight wide innovative people in New Zealand. And as Kiwis, I think that's that whole pioneer spirit is in us. And I don't, I don't know if it's yeah, I mean, I'm from. I was born in Fiji, right? So I came in as a child at seven. Mm -hmm. So everything about me is Kiwi. So I guess the pioneer spirit of who we are as a people, as Kiwi, which we should be proud of, yeah, is you know, is, is something that I want to instill in our youth as well. Yes. Why, when you come to Plunge, see what's going on, be a part of it, and use comics as a jumping, as a stepping stone yeah. to get to making movies, get to making your own comic books, get to making toys, get to making games, you know, to get involved in TV. I mean, we've got a great, um, you know, uh, film industry. So why not? Thank you so much, Adri Singh, for sharing your story. Head along to Plunge 
comics at um, 10th of July at 116 in Whangarei, and you can share more about um, Plunge. Yeah, thank you so, so much, everyone. You can, um, you can catch up what we're doing on uh, Comic Trade, um, Comic Trade on Facebook, or on our uh, Plunge Enterprises uh, NZ, I think it is on Facebook, or Plunge NZ on Facebook, something like that. And but also we have a website as well, um, which is plungecomics.com. And um, yeah, I think the world's our oyster now with this technology that we have. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, guys. See you.